In this problem we're told, a shot putter throws the shot with an initial speed of 14.4 meters per second at a 34 degree angle to the horizontal. Calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the shot if it leaves the athlete's hand at a height of 2.1 meters above the ground. So I drew a diagram what's going on here. So we have this uh, shot putter and he throws this ball, right? And it's gonna go like this and it's gonna land on the ground. And we know that he throws it at 14.4 meters per second and he throws it at a 34 degree angle that's 2.1 meters above the ground. So his shot is starting at 2.1 meters and then it's gonna fall even below that. So this is a bit different from previous problems where we usually just have a level, but in this case we're have a like a, like a starting ledge that he throws it off of, right? 2.1 meters. So this is a diagram. Let's write down what's given and then we can solve the problem. So given, and since we're doing two dimensional, we have to have a given in the X and a given in the Y direction. So let's start with the X direction. Uh, in the X direction, unless specified, uh, the acceleration is zero meters per second squared. So they didn't tell us that there's acceleration in the X direction. So we're just gonna assume it's zero. And then V sub zero, the initial velocity in the X direction, uh, they don't tell, it, tell us explicitly, but we can find it uh, because they give us uh, the vector, right? So we're gonna find that in a second, but I'm gonna leave it as a question mark for now. Uh, our final velocity, we don't know. They don't tell us that. Uh, our change in X, which is what we're trying to find, right? We're trying to find the horizontal distance. We're trying to find this distance right here. Uh, so we don't know that. And the time it takes, we also don't know. So there's a lot of unknowns for the Xs. Let's do the Y next. So for the Y, we always assume, unless uh, told differently, uh, acceleration is gonna be minus 9.8 meters per second squared because 9.8 is the force of gravity, right? So that's gonna be that. V sub zero, we also don't know in the Y direction, but we can find, right? So I'm gonna leave it as a question mark. Final velocity, we uh, don't know either. Uh, time, or delta y, right? So the change in the y direction, we do know. So we, if we start at 2.1 meters, right? So we start at 2.1, and then it ends, right? We're gonna call this zero. So if it goes from 2.1 to zero, what is the change in y? Well, the change in y is gonna be your final, which is zero, minus your initial height. So zero minus 2.1 is minus 2.1. So our change in y is gonna be minus 2.1 and then it's in meters, correct? So minus 2.1 meters. And then time, we also don't know. So time, they don't give it to us, but this is gonna be our given. And so let's go ahead and solve. So we're gonna be using the formula uh, delta y equals, here, let me rewrite it up here. Delta y equals v sub zero times t plus one half a t squared. And so this is gonna be the formula I use for most two dimensional kinematic problems, uh, mostly because they always involve time, but so we're gonna be using this formula, but first let's go ahead and find V sub zero for both uh, the X and Y direction. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to use a uh, trick. So if I draw this right here, uh, it's gonna kind of look like a triangle. So we have 14.4 uh, right here, right? So if we wanna find uh, both of these sides, right? We're trying to find the vector. So the vector component or the Y component and uh, the X component. So this is going to be 34 degrees. So how do we go about doing that? So we're going to use trig. So if I call this Y and I call this X, we know that the sine of the sine of 34 degrees, we know sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite of this angle is Y and the hypotenuse is 14.4. So we would just write Y over 14.4. And then if we want to solve for y, we can multiply both sides by 14.4. That's going to give us y. Uh, let's go ahead and do cosine next, or x. So if we take the cosine of 34 degrees, we know cosine is the adjacent side, so x over the hypotenuse, uh, which is 14.4. So x over 14.4, multiply both sides by 14.4. We get that x equals 14.4 times uh, the cosine of 34. So these are gonna be our two x values. If you go ahead and plug it in your calculator, you're gonna get decimal values. So for y, you're gonna get 8.05, and then it's in meters per second, right? Because this is in meters per second. And then the x, if you plug in this one right here, uh, you're gonna get that it equals 11.9 uh, meters, 11.94 meters per second. So this right here is gonna be this one. Uh, now we've got everything we need to solve for time in the y direction, correct? Right. If you look at this one x, you notice how we don't really have uh, 
enough variables to solve for anything. But this one we do, right? If we plug in delta y, if we plug in v sub 0, and we plug in a, we should be able to solve for t. So let's go ahead and do that next. So if y is going to be minus 2.1, or delta y, and v sub 0 is going to be 8.05 times t plus 1 half times a, which is minus 9.8 times t squared. So if we expand this a bit, uh, 1 half times minus 9.8 is going to be minus 4.9 times t squared. So this right here, if you notice, uh, if we add the 2.1 to the other side, it's going to be in quadratic form. So 0 is going to be equal to, and I'm moving the minus 4.9 out front, and then it's going to be plus 8.05t, and then plus 2.1. So this is quadratic form, and we're trying to solve for t. And so I think the best way of going about this, if your teacher does allow you, you, uh, allow you to use a graphing calculator, what you should do is just take this function, plug it in your calculator, and then you can see where it intersects 0, and those are going to be your time values. So I went ahead and did that here. Uh, that's what I recommend you to do. If you go ahead and do that, you're going to get two different time values. t equals minus uh, 0.23 and 1.87. So these right here are your time values. And what you should know is that time in the real world, or in any way possible, can be negative, right? You can't say a negative time. So we know that this value doesn't make sense. So we're not going to be using this one. Uh, but you can have 1.87 seconds, right? So t is going to be equal to 1.87. Keep in mind, this is in meters per second. So the time we're using is seconds. So the time is going to be 1.87 seconds. And so the time for both is going to be the same, right? Because it's just the time in the vertical direction to it reaches the ground and the time in the horizontal. And they take the same amount of time. So time equals 1.87 seconds. And now that we've got this, right, what you should notice is that on this side, what we can do is solve for delta x, which is, uh, which is exactly what we're trying to find. So, because we have the same variables, right, we have uh, the acceleration, we have the velocity, and now we have the time, right? In this case, we had delta y, but this case we have time, and we're solving for delta, or delta x in this case. So let's just go ahead and plug everything in. So it's going to be the same formula, except for delta y is going to be replaced with delta x. So delta x, right, is going to be equal to v sub 0, which is 11.94 times t, uh, which is time is 1.87 plus 1 half times acceleration. And so acceleration is going to be 0. So times 0 times 1.87 squared. So what you should notice is that this 0 is going to make this whole side 0. So it's just going to become plus 0. So plus zero is just doing nothing. So it's just going to be 11.94 times 1.87. So initial velocity times the time it takes. So if you go ahead and do that, delta x is going to be equal to 22.32. And so I'm going to round to the tenths place. So it's going to become 22.3. And so keep in mind what units we're using. Uh, it's going to be a distance, right? So it's going to be in meters because we're using meters per second and meters per second squared. So delta x is going to be equal to 22.3 meters. And so the horizontal distance traveled right here is going to be 22.3 meters. And so, yeah, that's how you solve this problem.